the briefer told them the date and the time and the activity that they had previously written down. And we asked them to select through these buttons which of the applications that were running at that point in time were important to their given activity. At the end of the five day long period, users would run Clotho Cleaner. And this in following with the uh, Boy Scouts of America motto, we left no uh, trail or we left nothing behind. This bundled up all their information, sent it to us in a secure manner, it was completely anonymized, and then it removed all the software, all the logging, everything that we had on their computer so that nothing was left at the end of the five day long period. Now we initially recruited 36 users for our study, 22 of whom completed the five day long experiment. There were 55% uh, 55 of them were men, which meant 45% were women, so we had a fairly equal split by gender. The median age was 46 and a half, but our age span was from 21 to 59 years old. And if you can see here, we have a fairly diverse background. I mean, they came from multiple universities and multiple companies and multiple education backgrounds. And I'm sure we could have built a really great model of human-computer interaction graduate students at the University of Illinois in the lab right down the hall from me. But what we wanted to do is find a universal model, a universal, to see if there's a universal way that we can determine if, what an important application is, this qualitative notion in a quantitative manner. So when we first got all of our data in, we drew this little histogram. And what this shows is how many occurrences there was, let's say, one application that was important, how many occurrences there were two applications that were important, and so on and so forth. And what we initially saw is that 60% of the time, there was only one application important. But what does that mean? That means that 35.5% of the time, if we were using window focus and it was exactly 100% correct, it would fail to identify the important applications. Let me say that one more time. At best, if window focus was the perfect predictor of important applications, it would fail 35.5% of the time at best. So we collected 11,899 measures about the way people use the computer. Now I can't really go into all 11,899 right now in the time remaining on this talk that is covered in my paper. But the short answer is we looked at all those aspects of computer usage, but we also looked at them over time. We realized that you know, some things that might be more predictive might have happened two minutes ago instead of right at that moment. We also realized that no application works in a vacuum. So we also looked at the performance of each application compared to other applications that were running on the system at that point in time. We did, and we, with this data, we built three different models. We, we built a naive Bayes model, a logistic regression model, and a J48 tree model. And we used a five-way cross-validation to ensure the quality of our results. And here are our Kappa scores. And what I would like to point out is if we look at using window focus, we have a Kappa score of 0.48, which is considered poor or fair, depending on how you assess Kappa. But if you look at our decision tree, we had a Kappa score of 0.62. When you do the significance for that, P is less than 0.01. This was a highly significant improvement in the ability of our tree model to predict important applications. But what's a Kappa score? Right? I mean, this is a number. It goes from 0 to 1. But it's a, it's a very hard number to get your, your, your mental map around. Right? What, is it, what does 0.62 actually mean? Well, in data mining, a common way to analyze the performance of sparse data modeling is to use uh, sensitivity. Sensitivity is the number of ones, or important applications, that are identified by the model as being an important application. And this is what gets really, really cool. If you look at using window focus, we have a sensitivity of 43%. That means 43% of the time using window focus is correct. That's way below that perfect number of 60 that I talked about earlier. But if you look at our decision tree, it has a sensitivity of 66. 66% 66 of the time, the decision tree is able to identify important applications. That is a 53% improvement over what everyone else is using in their other forms of human-computer interaction. This made us so incredibly happy to see this type of improvement. Now, one of the other benefits of doing a decision tree is that it also prunes away variables that aren't necessarily relevant or predictive of the information that we're trying to tease out. So we started off with 11,899 different variables. 
And the decision tree got us down to 185, roughly 2% of our original, dimension, uh, our original data set, which is amazing. We only need 185 different met metrics to determine important applications on a user's computer. Now, since this paper on the Clotho project, we've been doing some additional analysis of our models and what this actually means. So while 185 variables is low, what we wanted to see is how far can we streamline our model. And what we used is a technique from data mining called CPAR, and this is going to be presented in uh, a journal paper that we're putting together. And we were actually able to reduce the dimensionality of our data to 1% of our original data, just over 100 variables, to, to predict how important an application is, with almost no loss in the, in the predictive ability of our models. But a model, however great it is, it doesn't really mean a lot if users can't actually interpret that information, right? So we did a follow-up study called the Lachesis Project. And what we did is we visualized users' data from a 24-hour period. So we showed them the change of importance for each of their applications over a full day. And we asked them to identify in that visualization different times that they were doing activities. And what we saw was that users were able to find different activities through their day via the visualization with the same accuracy that the model was sensitive. So if we could build even a more sensitive model, we can improve the ability of people to discern different points in time. Now, of course, you might say if this is a time-based visualization, weren't people using the timestamp to dictate when they were finding different events? Well, only 11% of the users talked about ever using a timestamp to help them find these locations. 89% of the time, users were using the visualization and using the co-occurrences of, of important applications to you, uh, as a recall tool to determine when events were occurring in their day. But the really interesting thing here is what happens when we use the model. And that's really the next step, is to sort of take these models of predicting user importance and put it back in the hands of human-computer interaction designers and researchers and actually see what happens if they use it in contextual-aware computing or interruption research or task analysis. Can we improve these other areas of human-computer action and intelligent computers by utilizing this much more important and predictive, this much more predictive model of importance? And at this point, I would like to thank my co-authors, Nicholas Jitkoff at Google, Joseph Subito, who was an undergraduate who helped us at the University of Illinois, and my advisor, Kerry Kalaharios. All of our models are available online at our website, both the original models from the Clotho paper, as well as our optimized models from using our CPAR analysis. And uh, we'll take any questions you may have. So thank you.